Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Part two of the Mondeo Clutch series. Um, part one went down an absolute treat with you guys, had a, a bunch of good feedback, loads of people saying um, how brave I was to tackle such a big job on the driveway, but I ain't really got much of a choice, the driveway is all I have. It's the place where I've always worked on all of my cars, no matter what the job is. Today we're basically gonna start putting things back together. If you haven't watched the last video, recommend you do. But just to recap, um, we have got the gearbox and the clutch and the flywheel and everything out of the car, subframe, it was, it was, there was a lot of work involved, um, but everything is out. We're at the stage where we need to start assembling the new parts onto the car. I have accumulated everything that I believe I need, um, like a new flywheel, new clutch kit, new slave cylinder, new rear main seal, uh, what else did I get? Some new bolts and stuff like that. I believe I've got everything I need to get this thing back up and running again. I'm gonna give you a look at all the new parts first and then we'll get cracking. Okay, so on the workbench, you can see we have an array of parts. I've put the old clutch bits on here. So this is the old flywheel, the old pressure plate, and then the old clutch disc. And then we've got the brand new shiny flywheel, brand new clutch plate, brand new clutch disc. Alongside that, we've got our slave cylinder. This came in the clutch kit. We've got some brake fluid for when we need to bleed the clutch once this is all put back together. Some brake cleaner. This is what we're gonna be using to clean everything up today. Everything is very dusty and greasy and oily, so we need to get it as clean as possible before we can start putting things back together. Um, here is the new rear main seal. I decided I was gonna change the rear main seal because it does look a little bit oily. It's probably the original one. And I figure while I'm in there, that they look quite easy to change. I'm just gonna do it for the sake of it. So I've got a new one of them. These are the bolts here for the clutch plate. And then I bought some brand new flywheel bolts. These already come with the Loctite on them. You can see that blue stuff in there. So I've got a brand new set of flywheel bolts. And that's essentially it. That's all I really need to get. I do want to show you real quick the difference between the new flywheels. Straight away, I noticed how bad the old one is compared to the new one, just visually. So I'll show you that in a sec, but this is what everything looks like. You know, it's quite obvious, just nice and clean. A bit of dirt on there. So the first thing we're going to be doing today um, is taking the brake cleaner out or braking clutch cleaner. I want to give the engine side a really good clean for when we change out the rear main seal. And I also want to give the bell housing a really good clean out as well. Right, so this is what the engine currently looks like. There's the rear main seal, it sits around the crankshaft there. That's what we're going to be changing out. There's a bunch of oil and residue down there. I want this area to be as clean as possible so that we don't contaminate the new seal. So I'm just going to give this a really good squirt down with the brake cleaner. Give it a little scrub with a brush if I have to, and just basically just try and make it as clean as I can and then we'll change the seal out. Here's our new seal. Um, it comes with like a guide, this white piece in here, um, that's gonna sit over the crank. I'll show you obviously when I do it, but that sits over the crankshaft and then it allows you to push this on without having to, you know, damage the new seal. I've got my tin of brake cleaner here, which I'm gonna be using. I've also got a screwdriver here that I'm gonna be using to pry out the old seal. I'm basically gonna go in there like this, stab it and just sort of, you know, lever it out. And then just a rag just to help me clean things up. So. This is the first port call. I'm gonna give the area a really good clean. Right, so there's the old one, as you can see. I destroyed it a bit when I was taking it out, but it does feel pretty brittle, to be honest. This is probably the original, I'd imagine. So there's a bit of oil that spilled out of there because obviously that goes straight through into the engine, where the engine oil is. So I'm gonna let that seep out for a minute and then um, clean that up with some more brake cleaner and then we'll put the new seal in there in place. Right, so this is my new seal here. As you can see this white bit on the back, it's like a little plastic flange thing, but it helps you to insert the seal properly. So the white bit's gonna sit over, over the end of the crankshaft, over the metal bit there. 
that will sit over there and that will allow me to push this on a lot easier and then basically you just got to push it home until it seats down I'm currently under the car because it's easier to access than doing it from above because the car's jacked up so high I can't get to it so as you can see I'll push this a white bit over the crankshaft like so and then I'm just going to push the actual seal off slowly and evenly kind of need two hands for this really you can see how this is working though it's sort of halfway in at the moment I just need to push it the rest of the way Right, so the rear main seal is now in. As you can see, I've made sure that I've hit it in um, the same depth that it was before. So it's just a little bit below the surface. And I've also made sure it's completely square, so it's even all the way around, so it doesn't like bind up or anything like that. So that's the rear main seal, as you can see. All right, so I just wanna show you this real quick. These are the two flywheels. This is obviously the old one, this one being the new one. I showed you that there was a lot of play in the old one. So if I grab one of the dowels and I spin it, you can see there's probably, I would estimate about an inch worth of play there. It is quite excessive, as you can see. So if we compare that to the new one, this is how much play this one's got. That's it, that's all you get. So I'd say that's probably about less than half an inch, maybe quarter of an inch. That's all you get. So there's quite a bit of difference there already in just the slot. But also, if I come down here, you may be able to see that the new one, the, this main plate is here, and then the secondary plate on top, the bit that spins, sits probably, you know, half a centimetre above this one. Whereas with this one, it actually sits, you know, below it. So it's almost like it's dropped about half a centimetre. And if you look at the centre ring, this here, you can see how there's probably, again, about half a centimetre from the plate to the top of this ring. Whereas on the new one, there's pretty much no lip there, maybe a mil. So this old one has dropped, you know, half a centimetre, which explains why the bolts were getting hit, because the bolts sit in here. So if this plate has dropped down, when it's spinning, it's gonna be hitting the heads of the bolts, whereas this one won't do that because it sits a lot higher. If you see that, I'll just do the little side by side. See how much lower that one is? So if you're doing this yourself, um, keep an eye out for those things. If this is whole sunk, then it's no good. If there's too much slop, then it's no good. And if that ring is sticking out too much, then obviously it's no good. Right, next up on the list is Mr. Flywheel. I've got the flywheel bolts here, already thread locked. I've got my torque wrench out ready, so I can tighten them down to the right torque. The bolts are T50s, so I've got that prepared. And I've got to show you this, but I've also made a list of all the torque specs that I'm gonna need. So I've got flywheel, clutch, blah, blah, blah. All the ones for the subframe and steering bolts and all that sort of stuff is all on here. So I can refer back to this when I need to. The flywheel bolts are 48 newton meters. So I'll keep that in mind. It's gonna be a bit awkward to put this on because it is big and heavy. I'm gonna struggle on my own, but once I get a few bolts in, I should be all right. Right, so there's the flywheel in situ, all torqued down, 48 newton meters, and uh, that is all completely fitted now. I'm happy with that. I'm glad that the rear main seal's now on, and I'm glad that the flywheel's on. Next up is obviously the clutch. So clutch plate and pressure plate's gonna go on. I've got my um, alignment tool that I'm gonna use to make sure that's all uh, nice and straight. Here's our clutch plate, here's our pressure plate. Now, this is the tool I usually use to align these. It's like a universal, centering tool. I've showed how to use these before, so I'm not gonna like do a how-to, but I highly recommend getting one of these if you're doing a clutch. Um, it's a great little piece of kit. They work ever so well. So it's just worth noting, I figured I'd just show you this. Um, on my new clutch plate, usually it will say on here somewhere, 
um, engine side or gearbox side or something like that but on the new one it doesn't say either of those now I don't know if that writing there means gearbox side um, it's obviously in a foreign language so I'm not entirely sure what that means however if I look at the old one you can see on that side it doesn't say anything but on this side you can faintly see there it says gearbox side so the side that doesn't have this pokey out bit in the center so like that you can see this bit pokes out a bit on this side that bit goes towards the flywheel and then this is obviously as it says is the gearbox side so on my new one i'll just make sure that that pokey bit on that side goes towards the flywheel and then this side is the gearbox side which will go like that that large part twists onto the rear fingers of the clutch and then it pushes through on this side like so to hold the pressure plate and you can see i've centered that um so it's completely in the middle around here it's quite important to get this right so make sure you take your time it's all locked in now so this now can't move so when i put this on the flywheel um, and put the bolts and stuff in this will definitely be centered and then i'll take my tool out afterwards So with that um, clutch alignment tool out, you can see that we are dead center there. The clutch is in the perfect place. The bolts are all done up hand tight with a ratchet. Um, I just need to torque them down to 29 newton meters and then that is the clutch done. All right, there we go. There's the flywheel and clutch all fitted. I'm happy with that. Right, so next job on the list is gearbox prep. I sort of hid the gearbox under here under this yellow jacket for the last week or so, just to keep it protected from the elements. But uh, plan of action for this is uh, give it a good old clean because as you can see, we've got a build up of clutch dust, oil, brake fluid, all sorts in there. So I'm gonna give it a really good clean, make sure the bell housing is completely clear of any gunk. Then I need to replace the slave cylinder. So this right here, that just bolts on there. Remove that out there, replace it with the new one. And then this gearbox will be ready to go back in. I'm not gonna do anything else to it. I'm not gonna replace the oil seals for the drive shafts because they don't look too bad. They feel fine, they're rubbery still. So I'm just gonna leave them as they are. They're fairly easy to do once all this is back in anyway. So it's not too much of a problem. So I'm gonna grab some brake cleaner, get started on cleaning this thing out. So this stuff here is gunk, so like an engine degreaser. So I'm gonna go in there with this first. Right, that's the bell housing all cleaned. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Looks better than it did, it's not perfect, but we're not going for perfection. Got rid of all the gunk and stuff. So the next thing to do is to remove this slave cylinder in here. And it's held in by three eight mils. And then there's a clip up here, a little metal clip. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. This is where your clutch fluid comes in, just here where, the pipe, where we undid the pipe. And there's a clip down here, see that? Which you remove without losing it. That's what that looks like. And then this tap thing on top should just wiggle off if you just twist it around a bit gently. Like so. So I'll keep hold of that because we need that. Right, here we go. This is the failed part that went wrong in our car, which is what caused the fluid to leak out. Something obviously inside this is not very happy. I couldn't tell you what, but we're not going to find out. We're just going to chuck that to the side and replace it. I'm just going to give this one final clean because you can see there's a bunch of gunk behind there. And then we'll uh, fit the new one. All right, so I'm about to put this slave cylinder back into the gearbox. I've given it a good old clean all around there. 
so the surface is all good. There is an oil seal around this shaft here, but in the Haynes manual, for some reason, it tells you to put a little bit of black silicone around the back of the slave cylinder. So you see just around this hole here, it says to put a small little bit around there. I think it's just as like a precaution thing because although there is an oil seal in there, so oil isn't gonna come out of here, um, it's there just in case a little bit seeps past, it won't seep past this and end up getting on your clutch. I think that's the main reason for it. So I am gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put a tiniest bead just around there so that when I fit it on, that'll just seal that up as well nicely. Got my bolts ready. I've got my little tap ready to go in the top once I've fitted it. There is a little O-ring on this. I don't know if you can see that there. Little O-ring. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of red rubber grease on that when I fit it. This is great for um, like putting rubber into plastic and stuff. It helps it to go in, but it also helps to keep the rubber supple. I haven't got a replacement O-ring for that, so the more I can do to keep this O-ring in good shape, I will do so. So a little bit of rubber grease on that, just the tiniest amount, just to smear around it, and that'll go back in. I think that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and get fitting it. Also, the bolts get torqued to 10 newton meters, so torque wrench is at the ready. Let's go. So, I'm going to slide it on there, carefully, get it in place, a little bit of a wiggle. Alright, so as I said, tiny little bit of red rubber grease, got a little bit on my finger there, I'm just going to and then this is literally just going to push in here, like so. The clip is already in it, so it just sort of pushes and clips in, as you can see. Alright, so there we go, that's the new slave cylinder in there, all fitted up, all torqued down, all cleaned out. As you can see, the bell housing is looking a lot fresher than it was, so hopefully we don't get any contamination. The new little spout thing has been put in the top. Very happy with that. So this gearbox is essentially ready to go back in. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this rusty looking exhaust bracket here because lining up the gearbox and lining up those slots for the exhaust is going to be impossible. <laughs> it was hard enough getting it off. So I'm going to take that off and then put the gearbox in and then I'll refit that afterwards because that'll be a heck of a lot easier for me. Okay, so it is time for the gearbox to go back into the car. This is how I'm going to tackle this. I've got my scissor jack lifting thing that I took out with under the bottom some wood on top to try and stabilize things. I've lifted the gearbox and put it on top of all that. I'm gonna slide the lot under, obviously just jack it up, try and get it in position. I've got the ability to lower the engine a little bit because I've got the jack under there. So if I need a little bit of movement down, I can uh, move the engine down a little bit and essentially just try and wiggle this thing into position. It's, uh, this is always the most tricky bit for me. Every time I've ever done a gearbox or a clutch, getting the gearbox back on seems to, uh, catch me out a little bit sometimes so we're going to give this the best shot this is quite a heavy large gearbox so i'm going to try and be as careful as i can and uh, touch wood we're all good and uh, we'll just go back in Right, so the lift is now extended to its full capacity, the wooden blocks. You can see it's pretty much in line with the flywheel now. The gearbox does have to rotate like around that way a bit because there's a dowel here and that dowel goes in that hole there. So it needs to go up a little bit on this side. But apart from that, it's pretty close. I'm going to go up the top and I'm going to wrestle it and see if I can lift it up in position and try and get one of these gearbox bolts in. Oh my goodness, that was an hour of wrestling, my arms are dead, 
it's finally <laughs> on the engine as you can see oh my goodness let me get some bolts in this before it falls off oh my goodness i cannot believe how long that took Still got my little jack under the gearbox just to hold it up but the next thing i'm going to do is put the um gearbox mount back on on this side so this is all being held from nothing underneath it's all being held in by the actual car um that's my next plan this is part of the gearbox mount for this side you can see where it bolts on just on top of the gearbox here like so, and then there's another mount that goes in here, um, which help, which bolts onto that, as you can see, big bolt there. Let's go ahead and just quickly show you what I've been up to. Right, so here's the engine bay. As you can see, the gearbox is in position. I've put the gearbox mount and stuff on and these bolts are all been tightened and torqued to spec. Um, so this is all now holding itself in there. It does rock a little bit because obviously the rear mount isn't on, but it's um, completely bolted up. All gearbox bolts are in and tight. I've put the starter motor back in. If we then go under here, I put the turbo pipe back in. This is the one that goes underneath. So that's all bolted back up. Um, this exhaust bracket that I had to take off, I can't see it, that one there, that's all back on. All the gearbox bolts along the bottom are all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more bits. The drive shafts are probably one of the next things to go in, and then I can look at putting the subframe in, but I'm not gonna put the subframe in until tomorrow because I'm running out of time today. I ain't got much daylight left, and I've got a feeling the subframe's gonna take me a little while, so I'll probably end up doing that tomorrow. Right, so the next thing to do is going to be to put this subframe back on. It's going to be a tricky job because it's a funny shape, it's quite heavy, and also you have to get it up into a certain position. I'm going to use my jack, which I've got right here, and I'm going to use my new stand thing that I got, my motorcycle lift thing. I'm going to use that on the back, use the jack on the front, and slowly but methodically move it up into position. These subframes do have to be aligned properly. They have holes down here, <laughs> can't see the camera. Down on the back, they have two holes on either side, which you put a pin up through, which I have got the tool for that. Um, you put a pin up through, it goes into the chassis of the car, and then that allows you to line up the subframe with the car, because otherwise your steering could be out and all that sort of stuff. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be out to film. I'm probably gonna stick the GoPro on my head for this because um, getting shots and stuff is not gonna be easy while I'm wrestling with this thing. So yeah, let's see what we can do. These here are the holes that I was talking about. So you've got the rest of where the bolt's going to go through. And then this hole here is for the aligning pin. It's the same tool that I used on my Mark III Mondeo to align the rear subframe. You just put them up through this, and like I said, they go into the car, and that just keeps it um, in the right position for when you bolt it up. The 
These are the Ford subframe alignment pins. As I said, I've used these once before on my other Mondeo and they look a little something like this. And I've got a little chain with a little locking pin that slides through there. Um, and essentially this just goes up into the car and helps to align it. I've got one of them set up in the subframe here. You can see it goes through this hole next to the rear bushing. That bit slides through, holds it in place. And uh, once you put it in, you can then slide this thing out and then just pull the actual pin out of itself once you've got it bolted up and stuff. Very useful little bits of kit. Right, so as you can see, I've got the subframe pretty much in position. The front bolts are pretty much lined up. The rear ones I'm about to insert. You can see the hole there where that pin's gonna go. Okay, so update time real quick. The subframe is now in place. As you'll have just seen, it's all where it's supposed to be. I've put the two front bolts in just to keep it where it is. I've managed to take the jack away now so the front is completely sitting on its own. The thing that makes this difficult is you have to align all the bolt holes for the subframe to the chassis. You have to align the steering rack and you have to align the sway bar or anti-roll bar, whatever you want to call it. And then the steering rack has to go through into the inside of the car where it bolts onto the column. So there's all these different things that you have to make sure is lined up perfectly Otherwise it just won't go up, but as you can see, the rear bushes are in place, the pins are aligning the uh, subframe where it needs to be. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting all the bolts in this, not forgetting our little cross brace that sits on the back, because this is essentially part of the subframe, so I wanna put this in as well. You can see in here that the steering rack is poking through. You can just see it come out there. So. That's all okay. Yeah, it was a little bit tricky as I suspected, but it wasn't actually too bad. All right, there it is out. That's a little bit tricky. It was a tough hole in there, but this side is now bolted up, so that bolt's tight. The front main bolt is tight, so this side is completely aligned. I just need to do the same to the other side. That one came out a bit easier. Okay, so the subframe in this thing is completely bolted in. It's held in on its own, so we don't need this jack and stuff under anymore. We can take this out. Right, so these subframe bolts, the four main ones, they get torqued down to 150 newton meters and then 90 degrees of a turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that quickly. Oh, that's tight, Jesus. There we go. Now they all need to be done another 90 degrees. So I'm gonna use a big bar for that. Okay, so next stuff is, as you can see, drive shafts. I'm gonna to have to try and get each one of these in, um, put it in the gearbox, and then try and get the lower arm in with the drive shaft going in at the same time. It's gonna be a little bit of a juggle, but I'm sure it won't be too bad. I'm gonna do the long one first. This is for the driver's side. I can't see. That's in. There's a bearing here, like a runner bearing. So you put that on next. Here's a little bracket for it.
Now for the passenger side drive shaft bolt, I actually had to buy a brand new one because when I was removing the drive shaft, I was hitting on the end of the bolt with a hammer, didn't even think about it. And the bolt head had bent. The bolt was no good anymore, so I had to buy a completely brand new one. It comes with a thread lock on it. As you can see, brand new. Put it on eBay, I think it was like £10 or something. You've got to learn from your mistakes. I won't be doing that again because it's £10 that I could have saved, but there you go. Right, okay, welcome back. I can't remember the last time I spoke to the camera or what point I was at when I last spoke to the camera. Today has been um, a bit of a mission, I'll be honest with you. Not everything goes to plan on the Savage Garage, although sometimes the videos look like everything goes sweetly. Uh, today was a bit of a nightmare because I was putting the lower arms back in and I didn't really, I didn't really film much of this, so you probably won't see much footage. I was putting the lower arms back in and the bolts were just so tricky to get in access isn't great you have to put the rear two bolts through the subframe through the low arm and then also through the um drop not drop link the sway bar um, it has to go through like three different things and then there's a nut to put on top nightmare and then the front one i just couldn't get it lined up it kept wanting to cross thread like on an angle i could not get it straight for the life of me I managed to get it in the end but it took me probably two or three hours just to get six bolts done which was uh it wasn't much fun and uh i might have thrown a couple of things and a few hammers got launched but other than that um everything else has gone smoothly i will update you that i have got zero bolts left to put on this car which means hopefully that everything that came off it has gone back on it and everything is tight now i'm going to go around and just make sure just double check all the bolts make sure i haven't left anything sort of hand tight i'm pretty sure i tightened everything and talked everything as i went um, but I will just double check. It doesn't hurt to be a little bit thorough sometimes. So that is where we're at. Everything's back on, subframe's back on, lower arms are back on, steering rack's bolted down, um, the steering column's bolted in, everything like that is done. The only things I have left to do is fluids. So I need to fill up the master cylinder and bleed the clutch. I need to put gearbox all back in it. I don't want to forget to do that. And then um, just the things of the engine base, so battery tray and airbox are the only things left to go back in. And then we can bring this thing to the floor, put the wheels on obviously, bring this thing to the floor and um, see if we have fixed it, see if we have a working clutch and all of that jazz. So I'll just show you, just so you can have a look. As I said, I haven't put everything back in the engine bay yet. I've still got um, a battery tray and an airbox to go back in there, but it's pretty simple to do. Underneath the car, you can see we have a subframe back on. We have lower arms bolted back in. Our drive shafts are back in the steering rack and everything of that nature is all bolted down the sway bar uh, rear engine mount is back on oh well, there is something I, I forgot actually this rear mount up down here for the exhaust that needs to go back on i almost forgot that but everything else is done the bearing for the drive shaft there this turbo pipe you saw me put that on yeah everything else is back on under here and tightened down and torqued down and all that sort of stuff so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that back on before I forget again. Right, that is everything underneath the car. Completely checked, all bolted out, all torqued down. So I ain't gotta get under there anymore. That's good. Stay at that. Okay, so I've only got a handful of jobs now to do on the one day before we can fire it up and see if all this work has been worth it. However, I'm gonna be a little bit of a tease and I'm gonna end this video here. And in the next video, we'll do all the last little jobs, get this car back on the ground, and then we'll see if it works together. I don't want this video to be too long and I think we've done quite a lot of work already in this one. I'll be sure not to make you wait too long. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps out my channel to grow. If I recommend if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Turn on notifications if you wanna see when the next video drops on this. I appreciate all you guys' support. I'll see you guys in the next one.